Hey everybody, Economic Ninja. I wanna to talk today about when this crash happens, this economic collapse that so many of you have been preparing for, some for years and years. Um, some are just now learning since everything shut down a couple of years ago, how fragile this ecosystem that we call an economy is. And I don't care if you're in America or anywhere else in the world, we all know that this is a worldwide event. But I wanna talk about literally the breakneck pace that this will happen. And I'm going to first start with going back in time, back to the dot-com crash. Many of you know that I was an investor prior to the dot-com bubble bursting, and I did something about it. I was invested in tech stocks and lost my tail in a couple of stocks, right? But I still knew, even though I had those, they were speculative bets. I had a bulk of my money shifted from equities into the bond market because I believed that we were gonna see the mother of all crashes. And I was primarily invested in the NASDAQ. That is the indice that took the biggest hit during the dot-com collapse. But what I really wanna focus on is the Lehman Brothers collapse of 2008. And the reason why, we're gonna compare it to now and how today is so much worse, way more than just the amount of money, the debt that's been taken out by the government, by people, student loans, car loans, all that stuff. The derivatives market dwarfs what happened back in those days. But this is why it is so important for you to prepare now. This crash is going to be so fast, it will literally seem like overnight. And just so you know, we are collapsing now, all right? That's why it takes so much money to keep the economy propped up. The collapse has already begun. It actually started in a breakneck pace in 2019, but I saw it in 2018. 2019 is when the banks were freaking out and wouldn't even loan money to each other. And the overnight lending rate spiked to like 12%, an all-time high. It was massive, absolutely massive. And then we started this, this slow um, collapse of the economy. But the one, the day that the people wake up and run to the banks is gonna be so much faster than what happened to Lehman Brothers, and this is why. Social media. You see, in, in 2007 to 2008, we didn't have YouTube like we have today. We didn't have Twitter like we have today. We didn't have all these ways of getting information like that. Even though I know a lot of people say the big tech is censoring, right? The facts are the availability of information is so much re more readily available today than it was in 2008. The fact is the fear and paranoia of it's one thing to say the stock market's crashing and everybody sort of figures it out after a day or two because it's not going back up. It's like a down day and then another down day and another down day. But the facts are that information can run so fast through social media now with things like, oh, a big bank just crashed. Its shares were halted. See, back in um, 2008, a company's shares can be halted and quite frankly, most people wouldn't figure it out until they saw it on something like CNBC, or Fox News, things like that. Facts are now, a company employee can tweet it out and push it out to the world. Someone as simple as an employee of the company or somebody that has knowledge of the matter, which we see a lot in news articles. They can push it out to the world, but it's not only about how big their social uh, media footprint is, it's about whoever's looking at theirs and the retweets and the shares on all these different platforms can happen so fast that what happens like, and I believe this time it will be like overnight. We saw a shock wave in August and September with Evergrande. And the truth is the Evergrande story was being reported on mediums like Twitter before it was um, reported on the mainstream TV television news. And I think that's very important to learn about today, where we are today uh, in this world, in this day and age. Because this collapse is going to be so much larger, because the debt is so much worse, because the paranoia is even that much stronger, trust me, because everybody has this gut feeling. Even people I know live around, work with on a daily basis. They know nothing about economics. They've got a 401k, they're happy, right? I call them fat, dumb, and happy, essentially. Um, I've seen them get wiped out in the last two corrections, right? But they didn't care because they were still working, right? Now we have the biggest, the largest generation in our country's history retiring or retired. Now, living on a fixed income unless they're uh, depending on returns from that stock market, okay? And remember guys, the last two crashes, and they are crashes, 2001, 
dot com bust and the uh, uh, 2000 and the um, blanking out here. The Lehman Brothers crash of 2008, the mortgage backed security collapse, took the stock market, took the Dow Jones down 50% both times. To say that this is going to be different is the, it's a joke. It's so much worse, quite frankly. Now, this isn't fear. This is the truth. These are facts that I'm telling you. So what can you do to prepare? Well, I tell you what, the, last week I went and bought some more silver. Um, I've stored up some food. I have made sure that we are set up as a family to where if things go crazy, not only are we prepared to continue our life as, as closely as, you know, as normally as possible, but be able to take advantage of situations. As we get into a deflationary event, cash will be king. Okay, um, all assets will go down and there will be a, a, a piece of inflation in this before we get to hyperinflation and hyperinflation is almost baked into the cake when you take into account how much money has been printed worldwide. We are seeing hyperinflation and it is transitory right now flowing all throughout the world in different sectors of the economy. But I do believe we're going to see deflation. So it's a, a place to have cash. It's a place to have inflationary hedges like certain cryptocurrencies, precious metals, things like that. Um, to have debt paid off is so valuable. And I do honestly believe, and again, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a guru. Do with a bro hawk and a dream. But I think it's so important that we get this message out to the masses. So with that being said, please share these these videos on Facebook. If you guys haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I think it's so valuable to have just a little bit. And I and I really, really want to reach the people that feel that they have the least amount in society because those, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You can only go up from here, right? Let's just call a spade a spade. I've been there a couple times where I've lost everything. And I think it's very, very valuable to understand that. And when you have a little bit, when everybody's panicking, guys, it turns into a lot. So I think it's very important. We're seeing, I believe, the start of a European uprising this winter. Um, I believe especially as the cold winters end and as the, it starts to warm up, we may see a European spring, just like we saw with the Arab Spring years ago. And I believe it's going to change the face of our world because quite frankly, I believe after Europe collapses economically, the U.S. is very close behind, literally probably within a month because we're so tied together. The euro dollar trade is very, very crucial in these times. And I need to do some videos about that. I just, I'm pretty busy. I got a job. I run a few businesses. A lot of stuff going on. Oh, and I get to do YouTube videos with you. And I thank you so much for the subscribers that I have because Ninja Nation is the best type of human being there can be because they are meek, they are prepared, and they're not scared because they're gonna crush it when this thing goes down. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be six months from now, but I believe it is coming soon. And when it happens, it's gonna happen really fast. Thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.